Hi, my name is Viola and I'm a senior at the Water Barrett's Magnet School and welcome to the Palace. Currently, we're standing in the box office of the theater, which used to be the lobby of the Palace Hotel back when it was built in 1922 by Sylvester Z. Poli. The theater was open until 1987 when it closed down and then reopened again in 2004. The original theater and hotel originally showed silent films and vaudeville productions and housed its performers in the hotel. The original box office was a small booth with two people working inside of it. It had two clocks on the wall, one to show the actual time, and one to show what time the performance or film was over. This is the grand foyer of our theater. Although it looks like it is all marble, the staircases are actually the only real marble here. The treads of the stairs, which are the tops, were flipped upside down during renovations to preserve them. Everything else has been painted on. A river actually flows underneath this building, as you can see by the cracks on our floor. When the renovations were being done, as the floor set, the river caused cracks to appear. Originally, the seats came out to the columns at the front of the lobby, and there was a little curtain above a wall so you can peek in and see what time the show is over. Also, the marble niches found at the wall of the lobby were originally public water fountains. Here in our theater, we have 2,600 seats to hold guests for our performances. There used to be a center aisle going down the middle of this section when the theater was bigger. The first few rows of the house can actually be removed, and the stage can be either raised to create more space, or it can be lowered for the orchestra pit. All of the gold leafing and molding you see on the walls is an exact replica of the original. It took over four years to recreate and $30 million for the restoration of the entire theater. The domed ceiling is actually fake and made of chicken wire and plaster. This allows workers to work in the catwalk spaces above it, crawling inside. The theater structure is built like a megaphone, with the stage being the center and fanning out up into the mezzanine. Famous singers such as Tony Bennett have sung on the stage multiple times without a microphone. It can be heard all the way in the back row. Many people believe that the box seats are the best seats in the theater. This actually is not true. This is because, depending on where you are sitting, half of the stage is obscured from your view. Sylvester Z. Boli, the original owner of the theater, had his box seat second on the left, and it is said to be haunted with his ghost today. There are also rumors of other ghosts in the theater, including Charlie, who worked in the spot booth, and an elephant that fell through a trap door on stage when Houdini performed in the 1920s. The stage is roughly 5,000 square feet and seven stories tall, making it one of the largest theaters in Connecticut. Many different performances have been on the stage, including Queen, who actually premiered the debut of Bohemian Rhapsody in America for the first time on the stage. When nobody is on the stage, the ghost light is left out in the center. Superstition says that this is because the ghosts don't want to be left in the dark, but in reality it is to keep people from falling in the pit. Downstairs is where all of our dressing rooms are held for performers. We have eight dressing rooms, a wig room, wardrobe room, and a green room that can be used for anything the performers need. Keeping a tradition with older theaters, touring Broadway productions are invited to paint murals of their shows on the walls with the dates and the artists of who performed here. And that concludes our tour today. We hope you liked this introductory video to our theater and I hope to see you around soon.